In this video, I'm going to show you how I created a rather complex painting in just a few easy steps. This technique helped me to not lose my head and I hope that my mistakes in this lesson will be something for you to learn from. This painting is a commission piece for an album cover. My client sent me the song that he would like me to visualize for the cover and sent me a briefing with an image that should set the tone. First, I start gathering tons of reference images on Pinterest of depressed girls who lay in bed. I look for gesture, bed sheet folding, lighting and composition. Once I add the images into my PureF software, I start painting my little square shaped thumbnail sketches in a very limited value palette. In this stage, all that matters is composition and the general shapes and camera angles. The song tells the story of a girl that is in a difficult situation and tries to take her own life. The image is supposed to portray her state of depression and desperation. I thought that the song is already sad enough as it is and I didn't want the image to be just as depressing. I wanted to add a symbol of hope somehow and since the song is mastered with an orchestra which adds a very serene sound to the song, I thought it would look beautiful to have floating objects in the scene. Another important element is the violin. The client asked me to add it into the scene somehow. Once I finish painting a set of nine thumbnail pieces, I send them to the client and have him pick one. He likes the one that resembled the example image he had sent me at the briefing stage, which shows a bird's eye view of a girl crying in bed. The two downsides to the one he picked are the fact that I will have to paint a ton of detail around the girl's body. Since almost her entire room is exposed, the fact that her face will be hardly visible on a small digital Spotify cover is also something to think of. Why am I mentioning her face, you wonder? My client asked me to get the likeness of a very specific girl down. He sent me a bunch of images he had of her to aid me as a reference. I'm going to blur those images out in the video to maintain her privacy, by the way. I crop out the thumbnail and resize it to 3000 pixels. Now I start my sketching stage. I create a grey fill layer and tone the opacity down. Then I sketch on top of that fill layer and basically start interior designing the room. Since we are talking about the private chambers of a young teenage woman who's definitely not in the mood for a cleanup, I make sure to make the room not just lived in but also messy and lazy looking. It needs to feel like she's simply dropping her belongings onto the floor once she comes home. Notice that I keep her face vague until the end. I don't want to do any hard detail work until I am absolutely certain that I'm sticking with her pose and delighting. I do need photo reference for the type of things I find in a girl's room. I would have totally forgotten to paint the heater if it wasn't for the reference I gathered. The curling iron I find on another image is also a big help. I also look at images of crumpled clothing. And to be frank, I did look around my own room, which had a ton of reference for this particular painting to offer. Once I complete my first draft of the sketch, I dim the opacity of that sketch layer and draw cleaner lines on a layer on top. Once I am happy with my line art, I delete the first draft, since the second one has all the required detail in it, and pull the opacity of my gray layer up to 100%. At this point I decide to try out my floating objects, which require some repainting of the scene. Thus I enter the next stage, painting in the values. I like starting dark to paint the light in. I find it way harder to paint shadows into a bright room than to paint light into a dark one. This is my favorite part because it will be the first time that I come up with a presentable image. It will also set the mood. After I'm happy with what I get, I decide to put color in. And please do not do what I did in here. Coloring in the objects individually first turns out to be a very bad idea. I quickly scrap this approach and decide to color the light and shadow broadly across the room before I even consider what color the bed sheets are going to be. This approach will help me a lot with the rest of the painting. This technique gives the image an early finish, which means that at this point it is up to me how much more detail I want to add to the painting. 
Hardly anything seems to need any additional coloring anymore. I create four different mood thumbnails and let my clients pick the one that happens to be my favorite as well. I am mentioning that specifically because it happens rather rarely that my client picks what I like the best. Luckily, I do own a violin, which I pose and light similarly to how it would be lit in this scene. I take a picture and add it to my reference board. Hard surface objects are always harder to paint because they need to look right in perspective. You can cheat so much more with organic and flexible things. I put a lot of attention to the reflections on the violin's body. I want it to fit into the scene believably. For a short moment, I have this idea of a floating toilet paper roll that she tucks on the end at to wipe her nose with, but it takes too much attention from the girl away and makes the scene look rather ridiculous, which we definitely do not want. A levitating hairdryer is another idea that quickly gets scrapped because it also attracts attention through its large contrast with the bright background. I do, however, manage to add a camera, which is identical to the one I have laying on my desk. I also made sure to snap a good picture of it for reference to get the reflections of the light just right. I remember to clean up the lines that I have from my previous sketch by painting over them. The cat on the girl's bed is actually modeled after my cat Nicola, whom I snap a couple of pictures of in the right angle to use for reference. I love the color of his fur. When I am happy with the rendering detail of the painting, I start to work on the face. This one is very tricky to do since I don't have exact reference for this kind of lighting, pose or facial expression. I got lucky by having her face be so small in the image after all. The last part is adding the title into the image and I soon realize that I need to move a couple of the floating objects to make the title fit nicely into the image. This means that I have to repaint things that were previously blocked by the diary. I moved the backpack and repaint it almost entirely. I like the idea of the 3D effects that the floating objects create when they overlap with the cover title. I write a couple of entry pages to her diary by hand, which gives me the idea to also write the song title by hand. I had anticipated that it would be hard to bring in more information in the form of the song and artist title, but I am relieved to have had figured it out by the end. I hope this little tutorial was helpful. I will keep painting and posting my lessons on here and hope you keep on coming back to learn some more about painting with me. Thank you to my beautiful, genius, funny, kind and patient friends on Twitch who supported, entertained and taught me invaluable life lessons during the making of this painting. See you next week. Bye bye.